Welcome to Drunk on Social, the symposium, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode, and we have been doing these more sporadically. This is episode number 30 because we've been sprinkling in the interviews from our event back in August. Uh, So by now, you've already uh, heard, let's see, Rory Vaden, uh, London Lazerson, and Brendan Kane. So you are already like way smarter and Tristan and I are gonna keep sprinkling in news. And today we have a ton of cool things. But first, Tristan, let's talk about what is happening now, but at the time you're listening to this was a few weeks ago. Remember when Facebook and Instagram went down? Yes, this Dude. was a few weeks ago, but why is this important, Tristan? Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, it's down. Dude, it's been down for like five hours already. And the the most important piece to this is uh, maybe you have some peace and tranquility because of it. That's great. But, but it's time to diversify, right? Because at one point in the future, I don't know when Facebook will no longer exist, whether it's 50 years from now, 10 years from now, I don't know. But another company will take over. The point is, it's time to start taking a look deeper at YouTube at Pinterest, at TikTok. Stop delaying TikTok. My God, jeez. It's just jump on it already. TikTok and LinkedIn and maybe, maybe start using Snapchat for just more than the filters. Maybe, maybe. Well, and it's it's one of the things that I shared with Tristan was this, uh, because I got a text from a company who I've bought something from, and so I'm on their text list, and their text, this is brilliant, said, with Facebook and Instagram down, we're, and they, they, it's a, it's a phishing uh, product, and they said, we're phishing on TikTok, and there was a link to go check them out, which is then going to make me probably follow them on TikTok, but that's the point. Like, that's so brilliant. And, and as Tristan and I were talking about it, he was running over to his text list to do something just like that. And that's that's the opportunity that we're talking about here. One, you need to diversify because what happens if Facebook or Instagram go down for days? That that could be that 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 could be very detrimental to your business, but it won't be if you're on these other platforms. Also, when these go down most humans are going to go get their fix on another platform and they're going to move over to TikTok. They're going to move over to Twitter. They're going to move over to LinkedIn and you should be too, because if you're being seen over there, it's just going to, it's going to increase your presence. Dude. I think I posted on Twitter for the first time in like a month and it's four times. I posted four times, four. That's nuts. I, I, I don't even know what's gotten into you at this point. I don't even know. Dude, I'm crazy. I'm going crazy. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do either because I've got a bunch of posts. Post, so. uh, well, let's talk about let's talk about our favorite. Uh, I guess it's our favorite. It's TikTok. It What's the latest with TikTok? TikTok has now reached one billion users. Uh, and that is just so fast. I can't even believe it. Dude. That just shows you where where the eyes are going to. You look at Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, a- anywhere really that requires any type of short video. They all originate on TikTok and they're repurposed to go everywhere else. That's important, right? Well, it- I think that's where you need to go ahead. I, well, I was going to say too, the, the other thing that I think is really important, and I, I was just looking it up as we're talking is, is, you know, how long did it take Facebook and Instagram to reach a billion? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a sign of the times, you know, for, for one, Snapchat hasn't reached a billion and they've been around longer. A clubhouse will never reach a billion. It, it's just another further testament that the platform is doing the right things. They're heading in the right direction. And if you take social media serious, you need to take TikTok serious. So just in case you're wondering, Facebook was founded in 2004. 
and they reached a billion users in 2012. Now, yes, times were different then, but they also had a lot less competition then. So, you yeah. know, you can argue it both ways, uh, but the reality is TikTok did this in probably record time, I, if there is such a record, and, because they've only been around since 2018. So in three short years, they're already at a billion. Dude, they're going to probably surpass Facebook. Um, or get damn close to them. I don't know even know. F Facebook's over two billion, correct? Yeah, um, yeah, two point three, I think. But and at, at the rate at the rate they're at, they're going to be at two billion in, in a year and a half or two years. Well, that just shows you what opportunity there is, man. There's that's, a massive opportunity for for content that's engaging, that's fun, that's less drama oriented. Unfortunately, you know, you have Facebook that was at the forefront of all social media growth right after after uh who was that one um who was tom tom was with the thumbs up what myspace was that dude? MySpace. myspace that's it yeah but i forgot their name myspace um but that just goes to show you that things can change quickly right yeah. it's what we're talking about yeah. two years from now we could be saying hey look tiktok's the number one platform i don't know that it would kick off youtube because no. google owns youtube uh, but that goes into something that jeff and i were talking about over the weekend where it Google is making a deal with TikTok and Instagram to be able to have Google search through the TikTok videos and the Instagram videos through the hashtags. That's that's important because mm -hmm. now that's going to allow those videos to be indexed on Google and you'll be able to find them based on what you're searching for. To me, that's pretty big news, man. To be able to do that, you can become an authority by using short videos and that becomes part of your SEO, search engine optimization process for your business. That's that's massive. I agree, I agree. And in case you're wondering, uh, Facebook 2004 founded billion in 2012, Instagram ironically 2010, and they hit a billion, guess when? When? 2018 they both it took them both eight years no way interesting huh wow well dude i mean look i think if clubhouse would have done it right they could have they could have gone in that same direction but they've scaled down significantly to match their specific niche i don't know that they problem. i don't know that they've scaled down i think the audience has scaled by, them down <laughs> they scaled down not on purpose <laughs> they were scaled down yes by correct. the audience correct. that's so funny it's so true so true buddy but yes right, well you you've also got a, an awesome graph you wanted to talk to us uh to us about oh yeah tell me about that awesome graph yeah, so I'm going to share this, and uh, this will be in in uh, Drunk on Social Facebook group, so you can go find it there. But the uh, the article is about what happens on the internet every minute. This is the 2021 version, and and just kind of talking about where people are every single minute, and you know it's fascinating. So, like for example, every single minute. Uh, TikTok users watch 167 million videos. Uh, Google conducts 5.7 million searches. Uh, Instagram users share 65,000 photos. Facebook users share 240,000 photos. It's a uh, Facebook Live receives 44 million views. YouTube's Dang. almost 700,000 700, users stream or 700 i'm sorry 700,000 hours of streaming video on youtube every no way, minute man. every minute every minute does it does it show who's winning like what what stands out among everything is it youtube that stands out the most i you know i guess they're they're all kind of different stats so it's it's interesting like like for example venmo users send $304,000 every minute I mean, Venmo just became Holy. a thing a couple of years ago. Isn't that fascinating? Wow, man. You know, well, dude, here's that a good one. Shows... Amazon. Go ahead. Amazon oh, what's up customers. with Amazon? Tell me. Amazon customers. Actually, this is lower than I would have thought. Amazon customers spend $283,000 per minute. Oh, man. Jeff Bezos, man. Will you rich son of a gun? Dang. I'm looking at everything else here. Uh, let's take a look at Netflix users stream 
452,000 hours. Wow. Which, which net, so Netflix is, is 250,000 hours less than YouTube per minute. Dude, this is how much data is generated every minute. Every minute. Wow. I'm trying to see what else stands out for me. User share. Oh, look, Facebook. This is cool. I don't know if you said this one, but user share 240,000 photos. Yeah. Nice. It's crazy. Instagram significantly down. E even Clubhouse is on there. Um, you know, 208 rooms every minute. Let me see anything else that stands out to me. Um, Twitter. <laughs> 575,000 tweets. <laughs> That's Every insane. Minute. Right. Okay, I'm going to Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to Twitter more. I mean, this is a fascinating thing. So so go check this out. I, I will title it. Uh, so if you want to go to Drunk on Social Facebook group and, and search what happens on the internet every minute that will be in the title or in the caption. So you'll find it that way. This is a really cool, really cool uh, graphic. I like it, dude. I'm glad you found that one. That one's really good. Yeah, it was fun. Somebody's right. texting right now saying, Hey, Facebook and Instagram are down. I'm like, um, <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, it's down. I go, this is why we diversify TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Oh man. That's funny. I know. I want to post these things on Facebook and Instagram, and I can't. Well, dude, we should do a. There's TikTok. There's TikTok. I, Get I on TikTok can. now. I should. Get on TikTok. <laughs> Kevin Hart, man, that's a classic. That's a good one. I I, I love that one. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, All right, buddy. Tell tell us. Let's talk about NFTs for just a second. All right. So NFTs. Uh, here, here's what I'm going to tell you what it stands for so you don't screw up at a party because I've heard people tell me the wrong acronym, the, the wrong what it stands for incorrectly. How's that? Okay. It's non N O N fungible, right? Fungible, like fun and jibble. It's fungible right? tokens. That's what it stands for. Like fun, people, fun, like a fungi, like a fungi. I've, I've had people tell me it's a non fundable token i'm like mm, that's close but that's not it it's it's, it's definitely fundable <laughs> what does non-fungible mean it means you can't hold on to it like it's a, it's like it's just a concept it's fungible google fungible uh and it's not a cryptocurrency it's it, in the, the simplest idea is this and i use this at when people ask me at events or i'm out people are like have you heard of them like yeah do you understand what it is they're like not really here's what it is Kids out there play video games and inside of video games, they buy stuff. They buy stuff that's not real, but that they can use in the video games. That sounds like, it sounds like Bitcoin. Dude, that's what NFTs are. Like, like right now, if you're, if you're watching this instead of listening to it and you want to buy Jeff's hat virtually and own it, well, you just purchased an NFT. Now you can use it in the virtual world however you want. The difference is now because a lot of people love Jeff's hat. It says fits or media on it if you're wondering, and it's gray. It's light blue color and a dark blue color. So it looks great. I like it. Thank you. Now people want it. I can resell it for a better price. And as I sell it, the original person who sold it also gets paid on it. So it's pretty cool, dude. It can go, it's like an MLM in some cases. And in some cases, it just ends right there where it's at. Where you sold it, that's how money, how much much that's how much money you made. But you can't actually own it, own it. But do you really actually own anything at that point? You want to get philosophical. NFTs can take you there. My dog just bought an NFT right now. <laughs> he he's, he does not agree with this world of NFTs. It's it, he's <laughs> saying he's saying this makes no sense, Dad. Makes Dude, no sense. It kind of it doesn't until you bring in the video game part to this. Like I understand it when it comes to video games because I played Halo and and then I started playing other games and then I started buying stuff in the video games. I'm like, oh yeah, I'd buy it, sure. That's the only way that it gets me every time. I'm like, I understand this. Uh, so, so see, I, I don't understand it because I, the only video game I've played in years was a app, a, a mobile app, which was a golf game uh, called Golf Clash. And I could buy stuff, 
better clubs. I could buy. That's it. But I didn't really own anything, right? I'm buying it in the game. But I guess that's the same concept. Same concept. The only difference is that you actually own it in the virtual world, so you can sell that club. Imagine owning it there and being able to sell it as I well. I don't. I don't think in that game you could sell it. But I get. I get what you're saying. Yeah. And the the cool thing that Gary V did is he took it a, a level up. He's like, you know what? That's cool that you can sell it, but in order. In order for the world to understand this and bring it together, I'm also going to offer something that's tangible. I'm going to say, if you bought this NFT, I don't even know the names of his NFTs. It's like the crazy unicorn, the happy chicken. Uh, you, you've seen them. They're crazy, mm -hmm. right? Let's say you bought the happy chicken. Well, not only do you get that crazy drawing that he did, but there's also something attached to it in his world. You get two coaching group uh, two group coaching calls in a year and you get to participate in his event you get to go to his live event that's the cool thing that he did he attached a tangible object object to it which is the ability to do something live hmm. and not not all the other nfts don't do that that's what's cool so he understood that he's trying to bridge the gap so more people adapt to it and it worked for him uh, that's what nfts are how they're going to go into business uh I, I, we've you know what didn't we do a whole episode on nfts and the virtual worlds for facebook we Whatever did more episode, it was more oculus driven all right well go to that episode i'm sure we'll tag that episode to the bottom of this one yeah good idea and um uh, let's jump into youtube really quick because yeah. Do it. YouTube, youtube's still at the top guys youtube's number two most visited website in the world and they're trying to keep up and stay at the top. This is why they start adding the, the those shorts. By the way, dude, I started adding short. Our team is adding one short a day in, in YouTube. Me too. And some, some of those are picking up. Me I too. like it. Me too. Good, good. Just stay on it because right now YouTube is favoring that over everything else. And let's make sure to hashtag that because they're, if they're going to include the TikTok hashtags and the Instagram hashtags, you better believe they're going to include their own hashtags in that title. So let's be hashtagging in the title for the YouTube shorts as well, because they're going to be searchable. The thing that they just added was audience retention metrics. So some of you may have those on uh, now. If not, uh, then it will come. But the cool thing about it is it's giving you more metrics so that you understand where people drop off. And that to me is important because YouTube has been going in and saying, look, I, we understand that people's attention span is going down in general because of TikTok, because of reels. So we want to create this ability for you to chapter everything. If you want to skip ahead easier, just click a button. We'll take you there. Right. And I've seen how my kids watch shows. They just like skip through it until they get to the good stuff. Right. And if they don't get to the good stuff in time, that's where they drop off. And that's the metric we need. We need to understand why people are dropping off so we can stop doing that crap and start doing more of why they got hooked in the first place yeah. or yeah. what they were expecting. And to me, that's important information because I'm looking at the back end of my stuff and I'm like, okay, I average about six minutes and 28 seconds per YouTube video, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But where are they dropping off? Because something's happening. I'm not. Well, how, how long are your videos? They're about, they're eight to 10 minutes, which isn't too bad. Mm -hmm. But I need to know, do I need to do more jump cuts better? Do I need to engage people more? Do I need to say, hey, 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 hold on. This is coming. What do I need to do, right? And that's where I need to play around with it to, to fully understand um, the audience. But it's allowing me to understand that. And that's why I like the audience retention metrics. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Uh, shorts is working clearly because I don't have, I, I'm actually over 400 subs now, which is nothing, but I, you know, I, I haven't put a lot of time into YouTube and, um, I just had a video get over a thousand views and it was a, and it was a short and I don't get Dude, that. I don't get that. I like, you know what they're doing well, YouTube, that they're copying TikTok well enough that I, it feels like I'm on TikTok and I for. I forget that I'm on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah. And that's that's what's going to happen is if, if people are on YouTube watching shorts, which is probably, I think that's the one thing that I would question YouTube is that if you're doing this, are you actually going to take away from what you originally were, which is longer form content? Because now 
the algorithm is going to continue to show that user more short form content. And is it actually hurting a channel that is already very successful? Like if, if you're a channel that's very successful already, you may not need to get into shorts or create a separate channel for it. Um, versus you and I, we need to, we're going to use it to grow our YouTube channel. So I, I, th I think it depends who you talk to. And I think the reason for that is, is because like you said, Tristan, your average watch time, six minutes, for example, and that's, that's really good. And I think somebody who creates seven to 10 minute videos, if you're getting average watch time of six minutes, you're doing very well on YouTube. And so yeah. now all of a sudden, if you're popping in these one minute videos or less, and your average watch time is 25 seconds, for example, does that hurt your overall? statistics within YouTube is it bring down the average watch time, which in turn hurts you. That's true, dude. That's a, that's a solid question right there. And I think that's where, that's where we need to pay attention more. And we don't, we kind of just, there's two types of people that go into social media or there's probably more, but the ones that we're talking about right now, ones that just post and then expect stuff to happen because they post so much and ones that post a lot and then track. So they can change and tweak things as they grow. This is why I love that we did the hundred videos in 30 days, mm -hmm. right? Now I'm going back and I'm looking and I'm like, Hey, you know, there's something here. I'm, I'm understanding the niches better. Now I'm understanding my audience better because I'm paying attention to what was engaging. Yeah. So I think that's, that's where we need to go deeper in. I was distracted temporarily because, um, you know, Linda Landman, mm -hmm. she texts me, she goes, Jeff is a genius. He was the original TikToker. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yes, I love that guy. Just, just heads up, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can, you snip, like can you snip that and like post it to my story or something? I'm doing that right now. Oh, wait, Facebook's down. Oh, you're screwed. Sorry. You son of a <laughs> oh, uh, I'll send stuff. it to you. But that's funny. That's very funny. Good stuff. Uh, but you are, dude. You were persistent. Uh, You're the yeah. one who got I, me I, back I was the, into I was the loudest. I wasn't the first. I was the loudest. That, let's just be you, honest. You were like, Tristan, get back into TikTok, bro. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because you're right. You were know. messing around with it before it even really even existed. And, yeah, uh, but I jumped off. It was yeah. you who got me back into it. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that, buddy. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. With All that, right, well, I, think we'll, I think we'll wrap it up. I think we've gone. Oh, perfect. Uh, We've gone long enough. There, there is a cool graphic that maybe in, in if you can make note of this, if it still exists or there's nothing wonderful the next time we record, 32 social media video marketing stats you need to know in 2022. That's a really good one to talk about. So we'll do that next time. You're going to have to tune back in. Uh, but if you are listening religiously, first of all, we thank you for that. And uh, this is episode 30. Like I said, London was last week. So next week, you're going to get another one of those amazing interviews. I believe it to be, gosh, who are we missing? Oh, D-Rock. It's probably D-Rock next week. So yeah, pretty awesome. Make sure, remember folks, that, again, we appreciate you. The only way we can help and keep this thing going is if you show us, throw us a testimonial, throw us a review on your favorite podcast app. And you know what? Share this. Do us a favor. You listen to an episode, you love it. That's content for you. So go take a link and post it to your Facebook feed or your or your Instagram story or wherever and just tell people, hey, check this out. This was really cool. That's good content for you as well. And we will appreciate you and tag us because I promise you, we will give those posts love. So thank you for listening. Well, thank you for hosting this. Thanks for listening to Drunk on Social, the symposium. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated.